Good morning, everybody. I'm sorry about the delay. We had a bit of a technical glitch here. The uh, internet decided to go off in the middle of um, uh, nowhere. So I just reconnected. Um, so I hope you've all been admitted. Welcome here. And hopefully the rest of our workshop today will go without hitches and prick pairs, etc, etc. I'm just admitting a few other people. Thank you for your patience. And thank you for reconnecting. So um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Sue. I'm the garden guru here at Garden Shop. And um, we have been conducting these workshops. And Kay actually alerted me to it, that this would be our 43rd workshop that we've been conducting online um, for most Fridays, except for the holidays. Um, <coughs> so yes, we um, sort of getting to off centenary soon, which would be great. And um, I think I'll try and get us a nice prize from one of our suppliers um, <coughs> for that um, 50th birthday workshop. So today we're talking about um, rose pruning and rose maintenance. And I'm sure it's a topic that interests most of you. Um, and Kay once again presented us with a fantastically beautiful PowerPoint presentation, which I am going to share with you right now, if I can get to the shared screen. There we go. Go. I had to restart my entire computer to get this connection going. And I hope you can all see that. I'm just getting the slideshow on and then minimizing this little block here. There we go. So as I say, we're talking about a prickly affair today and it's a workshop on how to prune your roses and how to care for them throughout the season. So roses have been around for ages and ages and the archaeologists even know that the Babylonians were growing ornamental roses about 4,000 years ago. Um, but they also think that the tradition of growing roses is much, much older than that even. And I think for every person on this planet probably that's heard about roses, roses has got lots of significance in symbolism, etc, etc, etc. Now, roses are the classic flowering plant and it's available in many forms. You can get it in small little shrubs to climbers and trees or what we call standards. Um, <clears throat> I just want to move this block away a bit. There we go. That's out of the way. Then we don't spoil Kay's wonderful presentation. Um, the other thing about roses is that they really are very hardy and my apologies for this little block here. It seems that block comes up when there's a problem with the internet connection. Um, yes, as I say, roses are very, very hardy and they really virtually grow all over the world. Um, but roses are not entirely maintenance free, free though and they do need some care and attention if you really want to get keep them in good shape um, and you want your flowers to look good and a key part of that maintenance is actually regular and proper pruning um, and you can think that uh, pruning roses it uh, could be a thorn in the flesh um, and for me, a young and a novice gardener, um, 94. they get yeah, yeah. cold feet yeah. from uh, thinking about no, no, no. roses. Um, could everybody just please this mute the their microphones? Um, Is all the microphones muted now? Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so you don't have to break out in a little bit because you now think you've got a pearl, two milk, and one bananas. 
And I'm desperate. Um, yeah. I'm just going to stop sharing and quickly mute whoever is Maybe not we'll muted here. There we go. Please do make sure that um, your There we go. So, as I said, sorry about that interruption. It looks like um, it is a bit of a purple Friday today, but we'll get through this one. You don't have to break out in the cold sweat when it comes to pruning roses. And if you see a rose bush like the one there on the right hand side of the screen, you might get shivers when you see that. But when you start sort of going through the whole process in a systematic way, then you'll find sorry, that it actually very good. Yes, Kay? Um, you need to share your screen again, I think. Is it? Okay. Let me just escape here. Um, minimize that. Share the screen again. Right. Well, at least you get a chance to look through Kay's beautiful slides again. Um, and we were right here at this one where I said, I mean, if you see a rose bush like that, you don't have to break out in a sweat. There's a system behind it and you can actually easily sort of sort it out. Now, we get basic types of roses and um, for mostly, um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the hybrid tea roses. Hybrid tea roses are those roses with the big flowers and shapely blooms and those are the ones that's usually used for cut flowers they usually bear one or two flowers on a stem and it's actually advised that if you want a nice big flower that you actually take off the secondary buds on that stem to actually help the bigger flower develop then you also get your floribunda roses those are the roses that we plant for our gardens that look good all the time, that gives us color in our garden. And I'm thinking here especially of the icebergs, the satchmos, and those type of roses. Then we get our heritage roses. Now those are older type roses. They're usually quite fragrant and they've got a bit more of a cabbage shape. Usually the plants also grow a bit wilder and higher. We also get ground cover roses. Those are the roses that grow more flat. And then we get climbing roses, which speaks for itself. Now you must remember that most roses that you buy in nurseries are basically grafted. And the reason for this is because the root stock of the hybrid roses, of these roses that's been um, sort of hybridized over many hundreds of years, those roses, the roots aren't strong enough to actually support the rose for a prolonged period. That is why if you maybe do a cutting, say from a rose that you've bought um, from your local grocer or florist, um, it would actually quite easily root, but the plant um, eventually would have less flowers and die off because those roots just aren't strong enough to support the, the plant. So roses today are grafted, all the roses that you buy in the nursery, they grafted and you can see there on the picture below, um, you've got your graft, you've got your bud union, which is that sort of clumpy bit right at the bottom of the rose. Um, and then you've got your, your, your grafted canes on top of that. And then if you look at, at number A and B there, those are actually the, 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 the rootstock, the graft, not the graft itself that's growing. And that you need to cut out because if you allow that to grow, it will eventually take over the grafted rose because it's much, much stronger. Um, now, standard roses are usually grafted at a height of about 90 or 60 centimeters. In other words, that stem that you see on the rose is actually the rootstock. And 
if any shoots or anything develop from that, then you should actually cut it out because again, it will then affect your rose bush. Now, <clears throat> you can graft anything on top on top of a standard rose. It could be a hybrid tea rose, and that would usually give you a bit of a conical shape, or a flurry bunda, which would be sort of a round ball shape. And if you graft it with a ground cover rose, then it would sort of be more droopy and weeping. Now, why do we prune our roses? First of all, we want to take out old and diseased material because that is going to affect the health of our plant. Secondly, we want to stimulate new growth on the plant. And that is why it's important that we actually prune at the right time. And then we want to ensure an abundance of healthy flowers in spring and summer. Now, the first thing is, when do we prune our roses? And um, it is quite important that you don't prune your roses too late and you don't prune them too early either. Um, the best time usually in our area is about sort of between middle July and middle August. Best time to prune your roses. Um, you don't want to prune them too early because then you will stimulate new growth on the plant and it might still be too cold and those new shoots might then get damaged by the cold. Also, you don't want to prune them too late because then you are losing out on flowering time on your roses. Now, what do you need if you want to prune your roses? First of all, get a pair of sturdy gloves. Um, I tell you, um, you always get stung by those thorns, even if it's pretty thornless roses. Um, get a pair of sharp secateurs, make sure that your secateurs are sharp, and a sharp lopper for those bigger, thicker stems at the bottom. If you need to, you might need a pruning saw for the thicker branches, or especially bushes that hasn't been pruned for many years. You will need a bucket with sterilizing liquid, like Jay's fluid or Jig, and then you would need Steri-Seal, that is, um, the Mercura crown for the roses, you're going to seal the wounds with the steady seal. And then you're going to need a drenching fungicide like a pectocumulus and a watering can or a spray can. <coughs> now, first of all, before you start, first things first, sanitize your, your pruning equipment. Uh, take your bucket, um, fill it with sterilizing liquid, um, and just dip your secateurs and your loppers into the bucket um, to make sure that they sterilize and that I actually do between each plant when I am pruning more than one rose. Now <clears throat> the first step is to actually remove all the old wood, everything that wasn't formed in the last season right at the base of the plant. You're going to take all of that out um, and usually I use my lopper for that it's got nice long handles and I can sort of get in there and you can cut it right, right at the bottom. Remember, don't leave bits and pieces there because that might um, then shoot out again. So remove all the old wood and only leave three, the three strongest, newest shoots that was formed in the last season. Um, on the plant. Everything else needs to be cut out. If you've only got one healthy shoot and one new shoot, you only leave that one shoot. Um, so if it's two shoots, um, you leave two, but preferably, if possible, you can leave three shoots. You'd be amazed at how quickly roses actually do grow back after they've been pruned. Now, the three shoots that you are left with should preferably be in the shape of a basket because that's going to open up your plant in the center and um, it will allow light to penetrate and for lots of blooms to be formed. And then you cut those shoots back no higher than 30 centimeters above the, 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 the ground or above the graft, if that is um, 
a standard rose that's grafted at the top. So with a standard rose, you will treat um, the graft level as your, your ground level. So 30 centimeters above the ground, you're going to cut those shoots off. And how are you going to cut them off? You're going to cut them off at a 45 degree angle just above the node. Now you can see here, um, this one here, for instance, is too high above the node. Um, that one is too close to the butt, so you're going to actually damage that stem that's starting to grow out there. Um, this one over here, the number C, it's sloping in the wrong way because you actually want your water and your nutrients to sort of move up in the stem and then in the direction of the bud to stimulate growth there. Um, on this one here, the cut is too steep. This one has got a very jagged edge, that's number E there. And then you can see the correct cut there, number F, which is a 45 degree, just, just above the node, about two, three millimeters above the node, I would say. So that's your rose cut. Now, all you left to do is you need to put some mercurochrome on those wounds um, because like a surgeon, you have to ensure that the uh, wounds on the plant doesn't get infected um, and you want the plant to recover from this operation quite well and grow well in the season to come. You also want to prevent the uh, uh, a rose borer. It's a, like a little worm that gets into the wounds and it then bores down and it kills off the stem. So that will prevent the uh, borer also from, from getting into the stem. So you can use Steri-Seal, um, which is great because it's a disinfectant as well. Or you can use Tree Seal, which doesn't have the disinfectant in it, but it would also seal the wound. In the old days, people used to use wax um, and things like that to also seal the wounds. Now, the final thing that you are left to do, or the second last thing, should I rather say, is to actually spray your roses with a fungicide, a drenching fungicide like cumulus um, or lime sulfur, and also spray the swell area around the plant to kill off any fungal spores that might be lying dormant in the soil. Now, um, again, in the old days, we used to use lime sulfur. That's that stuff with the very chicken pooish smell. Um, and they are slowly taking the lime sulfur off the market, um, not for any reason so much, but lime sulfur also um, causes leaf drop, so it's quite difficult if you want to spray the soil around your bush and there is other plants growing there because that would then cause the, those plants to lose their leaves as well. It's been replaced nowadays by cumulus, which is also a drenching fungicide that you can spray onto your plants um, any time of year. It won't cause leaf drop and um, you can spray it quite um, safely on the ground without affecting the plants around it either. And you can actually then use the cumulus throughout the season as a contact fungicide if needs be. So it won't affect the rose. Now the last bit is to um, give your rose bushes that you've just pruned back a little bit of vitamins. And um, so you're going to give each rose bush a handful of fertilizer. Um, if it's Viga Rosa, it would be a spoonful of, of fertilizer. And that you're going to apply around the rose bush about four or five centimeters away from the stem. And make sure that when you use um, these fertilizers, they're very high in nitrogen, that you do water them in quite well after application. And that's you done with your rose pruning. Now, what happens? for the rest of the year um, after you've pruned your roses, apart from enjoying them. Um, <coughs> you need to do maintenance pruning on your roses and that you do throughout your growth season. You need to deadhead the flowers, first of all. Um, and a lot of people tend to just cut off the little butt right at the top, but you actually need to cut um, a, a sort of 
below the rose about 15 centimeters below the butt you cut about 15 centimeters 20 centimeters so that you can get a new shoot growing out from there and you don't get unnecessary dead wood um, by cutting the old flowers off it will also encourage the plant to make new flowers um, you also need to continuously remove diseased and damaged material from the rose bushes and you can also check out for those um, shoots that uh, those water shoots that come up from the root stock um, those need to be cut out as well um, after each flowering period and we usually get about three flowering periods in in the flowering season um, it's advisable that you cut your roses back about one third of the existing height and this will encourage new flowering and healthy growth and then remember continuously feed your roses um, once a month or so during the growing season again to encourage growth now it's good to follow a good maintenance program for your roses throughout the year because then you can ensure that you get the ultimate pleasure from your plants and you don't want to end up like sleeping beauty um, overgrown with um, her castle was overgrown with rose bushes and for 100 years nobody could even get to her luckily she was asleep but anyways um, I'm sure we don't have 100 years to wait for some night to come and save us we've got to save it ourselves now in terms of general rose maintenance from September um, to April you should feed your plants with a good fertilizer like 815 or Bloodfix Vigorosa um, and as I said you apply this fertilizer about 10 centimeters away from the stem of the plant and you make sure that you water them well after you have applied the fertilizer in May, I like to apply an organic fertilizer, um, uh, something like a Talborn 315, which will um, sort of make the plant strong for the winter season. And it will also help the roots of the plant to develop while you don't have much um, happening on top of the soil. So one application of 315 should last you for the entire winter season until after your pruning in which case you would start with a high flower high nitrogen fertilizer again now roses should also be sprayed with an insecticide and a fungicide and i prefer to spray preventatively um, especially in the growing season you don't have to do much in the winter because there is no pests and diseases really in the winter so from December to April, um, you need to sort of treat your roses for fungal infections and for insect infestations. And I really love to use systemic insecticides and fungicides for this purpose for several reasons. It's um, a systemic insecticide sits inside the plant. So it will only affect things that actually bite and suck on the plant. And it also helps um, to get rid of thrips, which is very difficult to control with a contact insecticide. It also means that your insecticide wouldn't harm any beneficial organisms on your roses, like ladybirds, like bees, etc., etc., because it sits inside the plant. Now, the same goes for um, your fungicides and they also your systemic fungicides they sit inside the plant and they protect the plant from within and i usually do this preventatively because i know that roses are going to get black spots they are going to get thrips and they are going to get aphids as well amongst other things so usually after my roses has sort of shot up a good bit after the pruning I would do my first application and with your systemic fungicides and insecticides um, they usually last for quite a bit longer so you would only really need to reapply it 
like once every two months. <coughs> now, um, the systemic insecticides that I would recommend is first of all Complete, um, which is a fantastic um, product. It's very concentrated, so you use very little of it. And you'll see that the um, coin or anti-insecticide granules, um, they basically have exactly the same active ingredient. Um, the plant protector, um, on the other hand, is an organophosphate and it has a different um, active ingredient. So um, you can use any one of those. Um, as I say, the complete, um, I do prefer, but it's also very good to actually alternate between active ingredients because that way the insects and the pests and the diseases, they don't get used to uh, um, a, a specific um, active ingredient and um, they will then not build up an immunity against them. The same applies to your fungicides. Um, two systemic fungicides, really good, is your Kronos and your Funginex. Um, and both these things and the insecticides on the previous slide, if I go back there, um, can be used as a drench. So you can drench it around the plant. It will then be taken up by the roots and um, thus prevent insect and fungal infestation. Now, the last thing is um, once you've pruned your roses, it's also very good to mulch your roses. That would help to keep the roots cool. Uh, it will help to, to cultivate um, a healthy soil around them with enough nutrients in it. It will reduce weed germination um, and it will also reduce water loss during hot summer days. And it looks nice and neat and tidy. So um, I've got a little video for us today and um, don't think that I went for plastic surgery. This video was taken about 10 years ago. So um, if I do look a bit younger than what I look now, that is the reason for it. A year goes. Garden Care A to Z is brought to you by Effecto. Welcome to Garden Care A to Z. My name is Andre Bimre. Today we're going to be talking about everybody's favorite flower. Then buy them when they're in trouble. We must love receiving them. Of course, we're talking about roses. Now, we had a garden center in the north of Johannesburg. We're chatting to Sue, the horticulturist, who's going to be telling us exactly what we need to know about roses. When we walk into a garden center and we want to buy roses, what different kinds of roses should we be looking out for? Well, first of all, you need to know what your requirements are, because you get two main categories of roses. Okay. You would get floribundas and you would get hybrid teas. Now, which of those two would I need to buy if I was looking for a cutting rose? If you wanted a cutting rose, you would go for your hybrid teas. They make bigger blooms and they've got long, slender stems, so they're ideal for cutting, but not necessarily to make a show in your garden. Okay, then the floribunda, what is, how, how do we handle that? Is that for the show? A floribunda is a garden show rose. Obviously, you can pick it as well, put it in the vase, but you won't get those long stems with the big blooms. They're going to give you an abundance of flowers in your garden, so that you can make a great show out of it. So the tall iceberg type roses, what kind of roses are they? Those are floribunda roses, but that actually doesn't have anything to do with the fact that they're tall. The most hybrid roses are grafted roses. And the reason they do that is because hybrid roses um, naturally wouldn't have a strong enough root system to sustain the plant for a long period of time. So even though it's a bush rose, it would also be grafted. Now you can have a look at this, you'll see this is a bush rose and you'll see it's grafted there onto the dog rose root system. So actually the root of the plant is a different type of rose. Did you just call the base or the, the stock of the plant a dog rose? The root stock okay. is called the dog, dog rose. So this part of the rose 
up to the roots would also be a dark rose. Okay. And then it's a standard rose or a tall rose would just be grafted at a different level. What sort of time of the year do they flower and for how long? Well, you know, your Floribunda roses obviously flower for longer than your hybrid tea roses. Okay. Usually you would get about three flowering periods in your roses, abundant periods. Your first one being sort of middle spring, October, when you would get your first flowering. Okay. Then usually you would cut your roses back a little bit. You would get a second flowering in about January. And then if you look after your roses very well, you might get another flowering around end of March, April. Fantastic. Climatic conditions, are they widely adapted? Can we grow them anywhere? Yes, mostly you can. Um, what roses prefer though is sort of a dry, drier conditions because you get less fungal infections. Um, they don't like their roots to be wet, so you need okay, well-drained so soil. Yes, you need well-drained soil for your roses. Um, and as I say, sort of a drier climate is preferable because it would, would reduce your fungal infection. A place like Bloemfontein, for instance. That's why it's called the Fantastic. So thank you so much for all that information. But now we're going to go plant a rose, and we're going to give you even more hints and tips on how to get the best out of your roses. So to plant our rows, we dug a hole. The size of the hole is quite important. It's got to be large enough to allow us to get nice aerated soil around the plant. The preparation of the soil that goes back into the hole is of huge importance. This is going to really give the rose a great start. We work phosphates into the soil because phosphates don't translocate very easily. So it's quite important to have it immediately available, work it into the soil that goes back into the hole. Planting depth is very important. You want to make sure that with planting, the level that was in the original bag is at the same level of the existing soil. steps in planting, we're going to give a nice top dressing of 234, which is a fertilizer specially blended for newly established plants. It also helps with aeration in the soil. Water really, really well. To feed your roses, use 815. It's a particular blend for rose and flower. for roses. Please join us again for more hints and tips on the next Garden Care A to Z. Garden Care A to Z is brought to you by Effecto. Well, yes, as I said, that's our little video on rose planting there. Um, and I hope you found that um, instructive. Um, just some food for thought. If you don't prune your roses, they will grow wild and they'll turn into a tangled thicket like poor Sleeping Beauty's roses. They would be unsightly and they won't produce many flowers. Once it gets to that stage, there's nothing that you can really do apart from really cutting back the whole plant to the ground and hope that it will regrow normally, which it usually would do because roses really are very good at um, growing back once they are established. Just make sure that you never cut below the graft level of the rose because then the only thing you'll have is um, your dark rose that's going to grow out and that's not going to give you much flowers. Um, so, If you look after your roses, you can make sure that they don't get into that sort of state in the first place. Uh, I've been to many gardens where I've pruned many roses 
and sometimes I've pruned bushes that has been not pruned probably for five or ten years at, at, at some point in time and um, people are usually shocked at the way that I do cut these roses back but they grow out magnificently and then in the next pruning season you think prepare that plant to prune it optimally optimally <laughs> that's a bit of a tongue twister there so pruning roses isn't actually that much of a chore in fact i find it quite uh, therapeutical and um uh, uh, it's like a type of a meditation to me and if it's done properly every year it's not such a difficult task but skip one year and it will be quite a bit harder to prune as long as you keep your shears sharp um a good sized rose can be trimmed into perfect health with in a few minutes and it's not a lot of effort um for the pleasure that all those blooms would bring you now um we've got some upcoming workshops and um, courses at our Bryanston branch and then also at our Parktown branch where we are busy um, uh, making a facility that where we can accommodate uh, students and on the 10th of July we will have a rose pruning and rose care workshop at our Bryanston branch if you want to get a bit more hands-on regarding the rose pruning and you're not exactly sure that would be the one for you to attend and then um, at the end of July on the 24th of July that's also a Saturday also at our Bryanston branch we will have a fruit tree care um, and pruning workshop um, we've got quite a nice orchard there at our Bryanston branch so uh, that is going to be a lot of fun and then our gardeners course is starting again on the 24th of August um, at our Parktown branch and that would be the inaugurational course for our new venue there at Parktown and then at Bryanston on the 25th of August so if you're interested in any of these courses or workshops um, give me a shout at suebeagardenshop.co.za and I can send you all the details regarding this so i'm sure everybody is sitting at the edge of their seats um doris is sitting at the edge of her seat and i'm just going to make our screen a bit bigger here. that's if the screen wants to listen there we go <laughs> and doris is here again uh, maybe move a bit forward doris uh, let me do this. Okay, great stuff. Have you got that basket? <laughs> okay, so our competition last week was sponsored by Lasher, and this week we've got another Lasher hamper to give away. Um, so if you don't win this week, then you might still have a chance to win this pruning um, sort of hamper from Lasher. And that basically consists out of a, a nice second year, a pair of gloves, and then also a hedge, hedge here. So that's our um, pruning hamper from Lasher. And the question was, why is it important to sterilize your pruning equipment? And all the answers that I got was entirely correct. Like they always are, I don't ever get any wrong answers. Yeah. So are you going to do us the honours there, Doris? Now you must show that, that you're mixing it up. I'm mixing. I'm mixing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's our lucky winner today? Oh, no, 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 no. There you are. And now, I don't know what I did with my glasses, Doris. <laughs> There's my glasses. There's a lot of things happening today. Yeah. And our winner today is Denise. Um, congratulations, Denise, on winning our um, Lasher pruning hamper this week. 
and we will be getting up to you i'll be in contact with you some other time today so if you didn't win then um you still have another chance to enter our competition for this week our lasha competition for this week and the question that you need to answer when is the best time to prune roses in south africa when is the best time to prune roses in south africa um, all you need to do is write your answer in an email to me suvi at gardenshop.co.za and you will go into our draw for our other lasher hamper tomorrow not tomorrow <laughs> Next week. <laughs> Next week, Friday. <laughs> it's really a very confusing Friday for me today. Um, so, yes, when is the best time to prune roses in South Africa? Send me an email, subi at gardenshop.co.za, and you will be in the draw for next Friday. Now, we have just finalized our topics for the rest of the year because um, June has abruptly nearly come to an end um, and our topic for next week would be lawns and lawn maintenance but um, that should be up on our website pretty soon and it will be on our mailer as well and we would then list all the other topics that we'll be dealing with for the rest of the year as well so just finally um, that poor guy is really geared for pruning his roses and i think he might have some sleeping beauty rose bushes there because he even has a mask on i think all of us have masks on the day so <laughs> um, if you have to put on your mask as well um and if you've got any other questions you're welcome to call me anytime audible one four six five six four eight five if i'm not in the office doris will take a message for me and i'll get back to you or send me an email subi at gardenshop.co.za and remember we've got very very clever garden gurus at all our branches as well so if you've got any questions um get that um garden guru there um at our broad acres branch it is salomzi at park town old godfrey and at um Bryanston, it's Sibu Yile. So any one of those three gentlemen would be able to help you with your questions and queries around gardening. Well, that's me for now. Until next week, um, hope to see you all and hope that um, all the technical bits work out better next week. But at least we weren't faced. We did get through this, this workshop today. <laughs> With or without internet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Enjoy your week. Bye all.